Starting it off in the zero to $600 price point of the best 4K gaming monitors in every price range is the Acer Predator XB283K. Now, if you wanna check out any of the five monitors in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links but let's talk the Acer Predator. Now again, this is in that zero to $600 price point. This comes in at 28 inches, so slightly bigger than your average 27 inch gaming monitor. As far as refresh rate, this maxes out at 144 Hertz and has FreeSync Premium. This does also work well with G-Sync and NVIDIA GPUs as we expect. There's no screen tearing or basically anything like that. No problems at all on this panel. Really good job. Now, as far as the panel type, this is an IPS panel. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. This basically means you're gonna have great viewing angles and great colors. Also a big plus is you have no risk of burning like you would on an OLED. Now, ghosting here is absolutely incredible. A hair away from being crystal clear. For some reason, many of these 4K IPS panel, 144, 160 hertz gaming monitors have unbelievably good ghosting. Actually, some of them being far better than a 240 hertz gaming monitor, which you wouldn't expect, but yeah. Because of this fast-paced gaming in games like COD, Battlefield, and Fortnite, it's actually extremely enjoyable. While you don't have 240 hertz here, you do have an absolutely stunningly crystal clear image, and in many games, this actually gives you an advantage to seeing the enemies sooner when talking about enemies further away. In games like Arma, Hell Let Loose, and Insurgency Sandstorm, where typically the enemies are farther away and more hidden, this actually gives you a significant advantage as seeing the enemy is multiple times easier as well, the panel is just multiple times crisper. It's like upgrading your vision if real life was a screen. Now, as for brightness, this hits 360 nits in SDR after testing, which is slightly above average and is good in most situations. But the HDR here was the very surprising thing, hitting a whopping 540 nits in HDR. And again, that's full screen brightness here, not just the highlights, so very, very good. As for the colors, this covers 90% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. Now for the price and everything that you get, this panel is shockingly pretty in game. If you haven't made the switch to 4K yet and you are wanting to, this is the cheapest and best I recommend for a 4K gaming monitor. So overall, if you want a 27 or 28 inch gaming monitor and you wanna get a 4K high refresh rate gaming monitor, this is the best choice and least expensive price point. An extremely solid option all around and what I end up recommending most of the time to new 4K gaming monitor buyers. But with that, let's move on to the $600 to $800 price point, which is the Gigabyte M32U. Now this bumps it up in screen size now, getting a 31 and a half inch screen size, which most modern companies just call it a 32 inch screen size. Now this maxes out at 144 Hertz, but this has FreeSync Premium Pro, meaning that you have the capability to have HDR on with variable refresh rate, which is awesome. Not only this, but this has variable refresh rate, not only in your display port, which is pretty standard, but also in HDMI. So if you have like an Xbox Series X or a PS5, Great monitor for that. And as well, as also works very well with G-Sync as we would expect. Now for the panel type, this is again is an IPS panel. So again, you have great viewing angles, colors, and no chance of burning. Ghosting here is extraordinarily impressive being absolutely crystal clear. This has as little ghosting as you're going to get on any monitor available, bar maybe an OLED. The gaming experience is absolutely fantastic. The bigger 31 and a half inch screen size immerses you just a little bit more and the 4K resolution makes games just seem a little bit more lifelike. Now I could say this a million times, but having these awesome graphics in modern games is, well, it's awesome, but without having a 4K panel, you'll never be able to fully appreciate how beautiful they are. All right, but let's talk brightness. In SDR, this has a 350 nit rating. This outdoes that rating just a little bit, uh, hitting just shy of 400 nits, about 395 nits. So that is good. This makes the panel a little bit more vibrant in SDR, but in HDR, this manages to hit around 440 to 445 nits, which is great. And remember, that is full screen brightness. While it's not as good as the Acer Predator, it's still very good. Do remember that this is a larger screen size. Now this still covers 90% of the DCI P3 color gamut, which is good, but to get a wider color gamut, you will need to increase your price point, which 
we're obviously gonna get to. Overall, if you want the best and least expensive way to get into a 4K 32 inch gaming monitor, the Gigabyte M32U is easily the standout option. But with that, let's move on to the $800 to $1,000 price point, which is the Cooler Master Tempest GP27U. Now this one is a 27 inch screen size. This maxes out at 160 Hertz and has free sync with the ability to have variable refresh rate on, with HDR and this also works well with G-Sync, which is great. As for the panel type, this is a very special IPS panel. What makes it special, you might ask? Well, firstly, this adds a quantum dot layer, which essentially increases the color gamut, giving you more deeper, vibrant colors and well, a wider color gamut. Then on top of that, this is mini LED lit with 576 local dimming zones, which means you get deep, deep blacks and overall a fantastic HDR experience, the best HDR experience anywhere near this price point. It's seriously good. Ghosting here follows suit being extremely low. Ghosting will not be an issue at all. The experience of gaming on this panel is, well, just absolutely stunning. Like that is what you will be saying if you get this monitor for the price, it's absolutely stunning. Not only do you get lifelike levels of clarity from the image, but contrasty deep blacks and fantastic color reproduction, making this panel jaw-droppingly beautiful to most people. Some people are like OLED fanboys and anything but an OLED is like just not pretty, but this is amazing. Now brightness gets absolutely insane here. In SDR, without local dimming being enabled, this has a shockingly good brightness of around 570 nits, which is absolutely fantastic and vibrant and beautiful all on its own. But when you enable local dimming, this goes all the way up to a freaking uncomprehendable 1,390 nits of brightness. That is correct. It is extraordinarily bright. It's, it's, it's too bright. I absolutely adore super bright monitors because it makes the picture super, super vibrant, but that too bright, that's ridiculous, that's insane. However, when in HDR, it does get back to a more reasonable level with local dimming on and HDR on. This is hitting around 430 nits of brightness, which is absolutely fantastic, taking into account that, well, the highlights are actually gonna significantly brighter than 430 nits. Uh, so the overall experience in HDR is amazing. This is a true HDR experience. You're getting deep blacks, you're getting highlights going over a thousand nits, and you have that color gamut. So let's talk about it. 98% of the DCI-P3 color gamut partially due to that quantum dot layer. This is at a fantastic price tag that is very competitive for getting a true HDR gaming monitor that has no chance of burning, but black levels very close to an OLED. Impressive. Overall, if you want all of the goodness of 4K, but then want to take it a step further to get insane brightness, wide color gamut, and a super contrasty image due to the 576 local dimming zones, this is one of the most beautiful monitors you can buy under $1,000 hands down. But with that, let's move on to the $1,000 to $1,300 price point, which is the LG 32GQ950-B. Now, this is a 31 and a half inch screen size, and this hits 144 hertz natively, but it has a 160 hertz factory overclock. For variable refresh rate, this has FreeSync Premium Pro and is NVIDIA G-Sync certified. And as expected, it works flawlessly because, well, it is certified by NVIDIA, so it better. But again, the FreeSync Premium Pro allows for HDR to be on while you have your variable refresh rate on. Now, as for the panel type here, it's also a little bit special. Now, while again, this is an IPS panel, instead of having your traditional thick matte finish, this has an almost glossy finish that is only very slightly matte. This increases the overall image quality and clarity of the display itself. Monitor enthusiasts have been asking for years to have glossy gaming monitors, but this is very, very close. And well, it makes the image quality just a whole lot better. Even when comparing specs in person, most people will be attracted to this one just because, well, it doesn't have that terrible matte finish. In addition to this, this has an ATW polarizer, which I don't need to go into all the specifics. Essentially, it increases the viewing angles. The colors don't change as much when you're going from the left to the right or the up and down. Now, while most IPS panels have fantastic viewing angles, and for most people that is enough, for creatives or creators, this is a huge plus. It just increases those viewing angles even more uh, and makes essentially very, very little change happen when going to the left and the right. So this is great for gamers that are also creators or influencers that need to use Photoshop and well, edit video. But let's talk about ghosting. It's literally crystal clear here. Besides an OLED, I do believe this is the best ghosting I've seen on any IPS panel to date. It's truly that good. The gaming experience on this is awesome. 
While this doesn't have any special full array local dimming, the panel itself is extremely pretty. And one of the biggest points is that it is extremely well tuned out of the box. It's factory calibrated for color. So in most situations, you'll just take this out of the box, no tuning, no adjustments needed, turn the brightness up and start gaming and that's it. This is a really, really great, well finished and polished monitor. Brightness is great here as you would expect hitting 520 nits of brightness in SDR, which is very, very bright and vibrant. And in HDR, this is probably one of the best HDR experiences outside of an OLED or a mini LED lit IPS panel, like the Cooler Master Tempest GP27U. In HDR, this hits around a thousand nits in the highlights. And I find myself using HDR a lot to take advantage of that wide color gamut, which does cover 98% of the DCI P3 color space, which is great. And the colors, well, they look absolutely stunning. Part of that is that the HDR is actually tuned very, very well here, as well as the fact that the colors are very accurate out of the box. Overall, if you want a fantastic 32 inch screen size, great viewing angles, fantastic colors and brightness, and a panel that is perfect for creators and gamers alike, this is a fantastic choice. But with that, let's move on to the $1,300 to $1,500 price point. And this is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G8 coming in at 32 inches and a 1000 R curve. And if you don't know what the radius curve is, it's very curved. All right, so the refresh rate is the only one on the list that hits 240 Hertz while still maintaining that 4K resolution and you get a 32 inch screen size. This has FreeSync Premium Pro, so HDR on with variable refresh rate, and it does work very well with G-Sync as you would expect. Now the panel type here is not an IPS panel, it's actually a VA panel, and it is mini LED lit, but here with almost 1200 zones. That is a lot. This is probably the best VA panel I have ever used. The 1200 local dimming zones give you extremely deep blacks like an OLED, but again, without the risk of burning here. So. It's great. Now, VA panels are prone to ghosting, so let's talk about that. Samsung used some wizardry here to make this the lowest ghosting I have ever seen on a VA panel by far. This literally has no ghosting at all with a very, very small amount of overshoot. It's extremely impressive. I've never seen a VA panel come even close to this with their ghosting. Very, very good. Pair this with then 240 Hertz, the 4K resolution. This gaming experience is probably one of my favorite on any of the gaming monitors that I've used, including like the ultra wide Alienware, I kind of do like that for a daily monitor because I'm, I'm more of an ultra wide guy. But as far as a gaming experience exclusively, and I have also used the LG OLEDs, this is probably my go-to. If I was gonna get one monitor to just have on a gaming setup and just game on, this would probably be it. Brightness here hits around 350 nits in SDR, which is good, but nothing amazing. But honestly, when I was using this, I kept using this in HDR, which hits around 400 nits full screen brightness and reaches a little over a thousand nits in those highlights. So HDR is the most stunning and beautiful variant of its modes to be in. So definitely keep it in HDR, turn that local dimming on and it's just beautiful. It seriously is absolutely jaw dropping. The color gamut backs this up covering 95% of the DCI-P3 color space and being very well factory calibrated for colors from the factory. The ability to display those deep blacks with those almost 1200 local dimming zones is truly impressive here for a stunning HDR experience while maintaining 4K and 240 Hertz. It's just this monitor brings everything for a gaming experience it's pretty dang close to perfect. Overall, if you want one of the best, most beautiful 240 hertz 4K gaming monitors out there, this is it. Again, if you want to check out any of the five monitors in this video, there's Amazon links below, pretty US, UK, Canada, and international links. I love 4K monitors. This video was so much fun to do as well. I've already had so much experience with monitors due to my second channel and all the reviews I've done on there. But at the end of the day, these just keep getting better stacking on top of each other, but you really can't go wrong with any of the ones on the list. They're all fantastic. But this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.